Hi there guys, this is Richard, your host with another marvelous video. This time, Top 10 Horror Comics of 2021. Those were the best days of my life. Me and my world of comics with Tintin, Phantom, Mandrake, and so many others. Comics have their own charm and a unique storytelling capability that films, novels, or ebooks cannot overtake. The world has seen some of the greatest horror and fantasy narratives ever produced through comics. 2021 has also seen some marvelous examples of epic adventure body horror showcasing some of the most imaginative works ever created. Marvelous Videos has presented to you many top-rated lists of films and series of 2021. Today, we present to you the top 10 horror comic books of 2021. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Monstrous Monstrous is an award-winning, ongoing comic series written by Marjorie Liu and drawings are done by Sana Takeda. This dark fantasy is a masterpiece combining East Asian folklore with Lovecraftian horror. The story of the comic series is set in the matriarchal world where the protagonist, Maker Half-Wolf, is an archaic teenager with a mystical psychic connection to a powerful monster. There has been a prolonged war between the Arcanists and the Kumea, a group of murderous sorceresses who consume the Arcanics for power. Maker appears human and is all set to avenge her mother. Her left arm is severed, which is the source of the emergence of a demon, Zin, who is extremely powerful, but Maker finds it challenging to control. The monster bursts out of her body whenever she's threatened. The gorgeous visuals of the comic series provide vital support to Luz storytelling. Decada has used everything from contemporary manga to ancient Egyptian art to create an overwhelming surface for the story. The Arcanists are wonderful creatures, but the prolonged war has made them pessimistic. Lu has successfully created the characters, displaying the conflict between the good and the bad. It is never clear which among the two tribes are morally correct. Takeda's artwork is absolutely vital for the moral uncertainty that Lu portrays in her characters, though Takeda has shown all the characters with beautiful, doll-like faces. Monstrous has won many awards, including the Harvey Award for being the Book of the Year in 2018. Noctera Welcome to the apocalyptic world of darkness with Noctera. Noctera is written by Scott Snyder, also known for writing some of the iconic DC comic books like Dark Knights, Metal, Batman, Endgame, Justice League, and many more. The artwork is created by Tony S. Daniel, setting the perfect stage for the story. Noctera is set in the dystopian future where the Earth has plunged into perpetual darkness and every living creature has turned into monstrous creatures called Shades. The only hope of survival is to stay close to some form of artificial light. This sci-fi adventure follows the story of a skilled ferryman, Val Riggs, driving her heavily illuminated 18-wheeler and transporting people and goods across the dangerous dark roads. It has been 10 years since the darkness prevails on the planet and Riggs has witnessed nearly every nearest and dearest one be converted to hideous shades. Just beyond the glowing artificial lights, the monstrous creatures eagerly await to destroy all that is left of humanity. Riggs is ready to take on any challenge or evil that crosses her path while transporting goods and people. Life takes a turn for her when she learns of an illuminated sanctuary, but the destination will set her on a journey far beyond the limits ever heard before. With her loved ones under the clutches of infection, her time is running out. The exciting newest villain appearing in the series is Blacktop Hill, who has been mentioned in Noctera number 4. He has been known to be specialized in killing hitmen, and his murders for entertainment are absolutely horrifying. The series has been adapted to a Netflix show under the direction of James Wan. Shadow Man Ever since his introduction in May 1992, Shadow Man has dominated Valiant Comics, selling millions of copies and being translated into a number of languages all over the world. The character faced the change of hands from Valiant to Acclaim Comics and back to Valiant again. The recent relaunch of the Shadow Man series by Valiant Entertainment takes over the public once again. Created by Cullen Bunn and John Davis Hunt, the relaunch was initially intended to be in 2020, but was delayed due to the pandemic. Bunn and Hunt are off to a flying start as Valiant gets his most wanted hero back on track. Things in New Orleans turn more horrifying to Jack Boniface, the superhero Shadow Man. Jack is a musician and a museum curator during the daytime, and at night he is the superhero empowered by voodooism. 
The dark cloud of horror hovers over the city as Jack realizes that the separation between the mortal realm and the spirits of Deadside has become dangerously thin. On investigating, Jack discovers that there has been a terrible invasion by the Deadside monsters as bloodthirsty creatures seem to prowl over the mortal world. Jack has to travel across the globe to stop these monsters from further invasion. Bun has managed to deliver just the right terror and horror for the readers, with due respect to everything that has occurred before. Bun has absorbed the past strength of the superhero, blending it with his own magical touch, presenting a bloody story with increasing dread as Shadow Man gets more and more involved with the Dead Side incursion. On the other hand, the artwork of Hunt, together with the colorist Geordie Belair, creates the perfect atmosphere of menace. The Autumnal Autumn is a special season for horror fans, as it brings with it a sense of darkness, presenting the perfect environment for scary stories. With this environment, Vault Comics presents their new horror series, Autumnal. The series uses the most fundamental aspects of fall, fallen leaves on the ground, and turns it into something terrifying. Daniel Krauss, who's very well known for stories like The Living Dead and The Shape of Water, steps into comics with Autumnal along with Chris Sheehan as the artist and Jason Wordy as the colorist. Krauss has woven something very spooky where the leaves are the pathways for monsters and a trail that takes us back to the small town's dark secrets in New England. The extreme horror and terror depicted in the story by Krauss have been the first of their kind. The small town of the story is Comfort Notch in New Hampshire, which is a great place where all the colors of fall are displayed. Yet the town seems to hide something that makes the locals anxious when the outsiders mess with the leaves. The main characters of the series are the single mom Cat and her daughter Sybil, struggling with their lives in Chicago. Cat hears that her estranged mother, a notorious resident of Comfort Notch, has died, leaving behind an inheritance for Cat, which she accepted, thus ending her big city life and settling in Comfort Notch. Soon they find that the townspeople were strangely eager to keep them away from the leaves and somewhat kept aloof from them. The cover page of the comics is so scary that Amazon has refused to promote the book, though it is available for sale on the site. The autumnal has gained the appreciation of the critics and popularity among the readers. I Breathed a Body I Breathed a Body is another science fiction horror series about social media, technology, and influencer culture written by Zach Thompson, illustrated by Andy MacDonald, and published by Aftershock Comics. In his story, Zach Thompson has highlighted the relation between technology and us while pairing body horror with it considerably. Sometimes in horror stories, a monster doesn't always mean a literal monster, but rather a villain or fear of society. I Breathe the Body is such a story where there is no literal monster, but the villain is the technology and how we are related to it. To be more specific, this horror series centers around social media and our lives entangled with it. The series is an eye-opener about how the big tech companies benefit from the provocative content that keeps us outraged and fearful. Anne Stewart is the social media manager of a highly successful online personality, Milo Caliban, who has posted something unspeakably horrific. It is now Anne's responsibility to deal with the situation and control the consequences while it pushes her toward a more terrible situation. The practical experience of Zach Thompson as a YouTube influencer has, in fact, a tremendous influence on his work. The series has been illustrated by McDonald, which has been highly appreciated by Thompson, while the colors from Triona Farrell create the perfect environment of the story. The bright sunny world of San Francisco and the dark horror beneath it is magnificently displayed in McDonald's artwork. The series displays truly body horror with blood, guts, and mutilated bodies. The Me You Love in the Dark The Me You Love in the Dark is a unique series by Image Comics, combining horror with romance. Despite being a romantic horror, it's one of the scariest comic series released last year. Young writes the series while Georges Corona does the artwork, and the colorist is Jean-Francois Beaulieu. The horror story follows Ro, an artist who is fed up with the busy city life and moved to the countryside for tranquility and to concentrate on her work. She goes to live in a large farmhouse which eventually turns out to be haunted. But strangely, the ghost lurking within the premises develops a liking towards Ro and they slowly attach themselves in a romantic relationship. They are together throughout the day and night, but Ro never really understood how the creature exactly looked. George Corona doesn't mind giving us a glimpse of the entity's image, which gets scarier every time. 
The ghost is fairly ready and capable of consuming rope pretty much alive, but the lady in love is in no position to realize that. She becomes more and more involved with it until the final encounter where everything is revealed before her. Corona and Bolu create the perfect balance of space and fear, providing the tonal emptiness that complements the theme of the story. The light and darkness residing in the house apply the perfect touch to highlight the two characters. We know that love is blind, but how can Ro be so blind that she ignores the bloodshed and dead bodies piling up? I really don't know. The Silver Coin Artist Michael Walsh joins hands with top-rated talents like Jeff Lemire, Kelly Thompson, Chip Zdarsky, Ed Brisson for the horror series The Silver Coin that equally terrifies the guilty and the innocent. Michael Walsh also joins the artwork with Gavin Fullerton and colors with Marie Griffin. Image Comics publishes the series. Horror history has witnessed many mystical objects associated with a curse. The titular object of the story, the silver coin, haunts everyone who touches it. The first story, called The Ticket, written by Zdarsky, focuses on an aspiring rock star who acquires the coin while going through his mother's stuff and eventually decides to use it as a guitar pick. From that moment, the tension rises until it reaches a terrifying conclusion. Zdarsky's script successfully explores the psychological impacts emerging from the dark and powerful object. We have another enthralling plot titled Girls of Summer by Kelly Thompson. Here, Thompson depicts one of the most challenging and unnerving plots of her career. Fiona, a young girl, finds the coin in a deserted cabin in a summer camp. Consequently, the curse of the coin targets her and her fellow campers following the storyline of slashes like Friday the 13th. The innovative and striking aspect of the silver coin is the versatility of the concept. The unification of various ideas surrounding one object is worth appreciation. The silver coin creates a unique perspective about how one idea of horror can be applied and taken to so many terrifying directions. The mutated colors and dark shadows have increased the sense of evil amidst the stories. The Nice House on the Lake The Nice House on the Lake brings us another apocalypse story scripted by present Batman writer James Tinian IV. The artwork is presented by Alvaro Martinez Bueno, getting its colors from Jordi Belair. The comic series is published by DC Comics. The least expectations from the opening pages lead the readers toward the mysterious destination as the plot slowly unfolds. Every guest invited to the nice house knows little about Walter, their host. Some are his childhood friends, while some guests have known him for only a few months. But no one was ready to turn down his invitation despite Walter being a little weird. It was an absolutely magnificent house overlooking a picturesque sylvan lake. Everyone was ready to accept some weirdness in Walter in exchange for a vacation of a lifetime. Each guest in their early thirties has a defined career and distinctive personality. Thus, the twelve friends are busy enjoying the time of their life when the world outside collapses. The story uses social media and isolation to highlight the helplessness and terror of the loss faced by the characters. The story is brilliantly complemented by the designs and expressions by the Bueno, defining the characters perfectly. Bueno and Bella have established a tense mood throughout the plot. The story touches the right chord, echoing the helpless moments of our lives in quarantine. Abbott, 1973 Abbott 1973 is the sequel of the previous volume, Abbott, written by Saladin Ahmed, an artwork is created by Sami Kivela. The story, published by Boom Studios, takes off exactly where it has left before following Elena Abbott on her lone battle against the evil Umbra. Abbott 1973 finds its protagonist, Elena, struggling to come out of the traumatic events of 1972. On the one hand, Elena tries to maintain her relationship with her girlfriend, while she struggles to adjust to her sexist new owner of the newspaper she works for. She tries to focus and cover a monumental election that could result in a new mayor's election, but a new group has emerged to destroy the new candidate and anyone supporting his campaign. With these challenges, Elena found evidence of evil magic called Umbra spreading all over the city. It is understood that a wizard known as the Hunter has been assigned to kill her. Abbott once again tries to protect Detroit and her closest ones with the help of her former husband, her girlfriend, and her estranged brother. In a fantastic way, Ahmed presents the social tensions prevalent in the 1970s. Elena has to struggle and fight against sexism and racism around every nook and corner, even from the evil source preparing to attack her. All the challenges make Elena even more strictly devoted towards her close people and reporting as she prepares to use her supernatural power as the Light Bringer. 
The beauty of Detroit is finally captured by Kivela. His artworks make action-packed or magic-oriented scenes fascinating and visually engaging. Depictions of magical possessions are very striking, as kind and soft characters transform into terrifying aggressors. More Another comic series by Boom Studios, More, is written by Jude Ellison S. Doyle, while the artist is A. L. Kaplan, and the colorist is Fabian Mascolo. More is a powerful series blending real-world horror with the supernatural. The series follows Marion while she is dragged to a female retreat with her sister Wendy, looking for some relief after she suffered from extreme humiliation. Despite her being the victim, the attackers proved her to be the culprit and dragged her name through the mud. As soon as they reached the isolated beach, there was a hint of something sinister lurking under the surface, despite the peaceful atmosphere. Other women of the retreat seem to be positively affected by Miranda, who is in charge of the retreat. Miranda teaches them many exercises that help them to control their anger and overcome the trauma of their past. Marion felt left out and went to the bar to get a drink. Someone approaches her and offers to buy her a drink. Marion is eventually drugged, made unconscious, and later finds herself on the beach. Later, she goes to her sister and informs her about her assault, but her sister suggests not to inform the police as they are not bothered about the victim. When Marion enters the shower, something changes. More is filled with gruesome horrors and twists and turns that compels us to think whether the dormant monster inside us is scarier than the unknown monsters roaming outside, or vice versa. Which do you think is more difficult to deal with? And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.